Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, recently I solved a very, very difficult killer Sudoku on the site uh, from the website deadlykillersudokus.com. It was a 10 out of 10 rated puzzle. And people have said they want to see more of this sort of thing. Um, and we had a request from one of our uh, viewers to take a look at this killer Sudoku, which is apparently very hard. So I'm going to try and do it now. Um, Let's have a look. Um, so you can see there are a couple of places to start here just using the basic 45 rule. So for those of you not familiar with the 45 rule, um, the numbers from 1 to 9 add up to 45. And we know that every row and every column and every 3 by 3 box of a Sudoku needs to contain the numbers 1 to 9. So, so we know that, for example, this 3 by 3 block down here will add to 49 it already completely contains the cages 22, 9 and 6 which if you add them up uh, give you uh, 37 so this square here has to be an 8 in order to ensure that the block adds to 45 altogether and we might be able to do that in a couple more positions I can see so this top right block as well we know that the five squares around this 26 cage must add to 19 because we know that the total must be 45 in in all so if these add to 19 and they're part of a 28 cage this square here has to be a 9 um, and therefore we can use that to find the value of this square here so we now have 9 and 27 in this in this 3 by 3 block so we know these two squares will sum to 9. Now they're part of cages that sum to 33, 21 plus 12. So we know these four squares here must sum to 24. 24 plus 17 is 41. So this square here must be a 4 and that means that's an 8. Uh, one thing I can just see which I'll just notate is you can see this 29 cage down here in four cells. Well, that can only be made up of the numbers of 5, 7, 8, and 9. So let's, let's write that in. And you can see the combination of this 8 and this 8 means we can actually, that must be the 8 there. So making a bit of progress with 8. Uh, and we can see also, if we look at this 3x3 three three block now, and the impact these eights we've found have on it. You can see that there's no eights here, and there's no eights here, and this is already an eight cage in two cells, so obviously that can't contain an eight, so the eight must be in one of those two positions. And I was wondering whether we could use that to eliminate, you can see there's an eight in one of those two positions as well. I'm not sure we can tell which of those positions is correct yet. Um, okay, well let's carry on down here using arithmetic rather than Sudoku rules. So we have 8 plus 19, that's 27, plus 10 is 37. These two squares therefore must add up to 8, and that means this square must be a 6. Um, so now we've got 1, 2, 3 and 4. So this has to be 3 and 4, this 7 cage, it can't be anything else. Uh, we can't get to 7 with any other numbers now, so that's 1 and 2. So this 15 cage now, these two cells have got to add to 12. Now can we use that? Uh, I'm not sure. Might have to keep an eye on that for later. And we can see this 3, 4 here has an implication for this 6 cell. That's got to be 1 and 5 now. And you can see that this now has an implication for this 10 cage because this cage can't be 1 and 9, it can't be 3 and 7, it can't be 4 and 6. So we're only left with 2 and 8 to place here. This can't be a 5 anymore. Um, so what are we left with? six, seven, and nine along here somehow. This can only be a six or a seven. That can only be a six or a seven because of this nine here. So in fact, 
this square here is a 9. Um, okay, which means this must be a 2 or a 3. Now, there's an implication here as well from look at the pattern of 8 in the grid in, in these in columns 4 and 5. You can see the 8s are locked in to one of these two positions here and one of these two positions. So whichever way round the 8s go, if this is an 8, this will be an 8. If this is an 8, this will be an 8. Now that has an implication with this 3x3 three three block because now we know there can't be 8s anywhere in these 6 cells here. So the 8s are going to be locked into one of those two positions. Um, which might not be desperately useful yet, but could, could have a, could be useful later. And there might be something elegant we can do here. So if we add, just use the 45 rule on this 3x3 three three cage, you can see we've got 10 plus 19 is 29. So these three cells here have got to sum up to 16. Um, but, where could a 1 go? Could, could there be a 1 in any of these three cells? If there was a 1, the other two cells would have to sum to 15. But the 8 and 7 variation of 15 is ruled out because of this 8. And the 6, 9 variation is ruled out by this 6. So there is no 1 in any of these three positions. Therefore the 1 somewhere in these three positions. Therefore this must be a 1 here and that's a 2. And now that means that's a 3 and that's a 6 and this is a 7. And we know that there is a 6 in here as well because of simple Sudoku rules, just looking at the 6 here and the 6 here. So we now know this 19 cage must also have a 5 along, along there in order to make the numbers work. So that allows us to place a 7 here and a 5 here which is a nice spot. So that means we've got sevens and okay, fours along here. Nine, four like that. And this has got to be 13. So that looks like it's working. Okay. And what do we need to fill the row now? We need threes along here and also a nine somewhere. And the nine can't be up there because of this nine. So there we go. You can now see this 14 cage. These two sets get the squares have to sum to eight. And the only way that can work now is with three and five, which means these two squares are now one and two. So these two have to sum to 14 without using a 9. So this is 6 and 8, which must be this way around now. Um, 8, 8, 6, 6. OK. So the options remaining for these two are still 4, 6 and 1, 9. But the, if it's 1, 9, it has to be this way around. And if it's 4, 6, it has to be this way around, I think. So it's probably worth notating that. Just wondering if there's a really nice bit of logic we can use on on this row of the grid. Um, so I'm going to start thinking about it verbally now. It might prove to be nonsense, but you can see this 10 square has to be a 1, 9 or a 4, 6. Now this 8 cage here can't be 3, 5 anymore. So this is either going to be 1, 7 or it's going to be 2, 6. So clearly if this is 1, 7, this will switch to being 4, 6. And if this is 2, 6, this will switch to being 1, 9. Why does all that matter? Well, what that means is whichever way round this turns out to be, we won't find the number 1 or the number 6 anywhere else in the row. Now, does that have an implication for this cage in particular? It very nearly does. It nearly proves that 8-4 isn't, isn't possible, but not quite. If this is 8-4, these have to add to 10 without using 1-9, without using 4-6, without using 
two eight. So this would have to be three and seven in that order. That's forced. If this is eight three, these two have to add to eleven without using eight three, without using five six. Um, could be four seven, I guess, and could be two nine, I think. Should be that way around. So we have we have limited that quite a lot, but not quite as much as I was hoping. Hmm. No. Okay, so let's try and do a bit more arithmetic. Let's have a look at row four of the grid again. All rows need to add to 45. Here we've got 8 plus 13 plus 13, so that's 34. These two cells have to add to 11. We could have 2, 9 if it was that way around. Can't have 3, 8. We can have 4, 7 either way around, I think. Um, and we can't have 5, 6, so relatively restricted here. So, And if these add to 11, these two have to add to 8. Um, again, we can't have the 3, 5 variation, so this is either 1, 7, uh, which would have to be that way round, or it's going to be 2, 6, which would have to be this way round. So this, this box is quite restricted. Um, now, this 13 cage, again, this can't contain an 8 for that reason, so this is either going to be 4, 9, or six seven. Let's just write that in. Six seven four nine four nine like that. Um, that means you can, we can immediately rule out this being three. If this is a three, these three squares need to add to twenty three. So that's going to be six eight and nine, and that's going to remove every possibility for this thirteen cage. So this isn't a three. probably can do something more. 13 in 4 squares is relatively restricted. Um, can't contain a 9, because then the other 3 digits would have to add to 4. Can't contain an 8. In this instance, it can't actually contain a 7 either, because if it contained a 7, the other 3 digits would be 1, 2, and 3. And this square adds to 11 and it's either 2 9 or 4 7 so both of those would be ruled out if this contains a 7 so it doesn't similarly if it contains a 6 the other three digits would be 1 2 and 4 and that also is prohibited because that would again take out the 2 9 and the 4 7 possibility from this 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 these two cells so in fact this has to contain so it's of the form 1, 3, 4, 5, and that is forced. So that might be useful. Not surprising, but it is useful. Yes, look, we can get rid of all these 4s now. More 4, that can no longer contain a 7, and there we go. 2 and 9 into these cells, that's got to be 1 and uh, 7 now, I think. This is 4 and 6. So no longer contains a 4. And we're nearly there, I think. Six, seven. I can resolve the 4, 3 thing down here. 4 and 3. Now uh, this can't contain a 3. See, we've got 3 here and 3 here. This can't be a 3 because then this square would be a 9. So the 3 must be in that position. Um, which means I think this has to be a 5. And this has to be a 7. Which resolves the 6, 7 combination there. 7, 6. Let's just tidy up and solve a little bit now. Da, 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 da. These, we can force this square now because you can see we've got 17 here plus 12 is 29. These two squares must sum to, but they've got to be 7 and 9 in that order like that. 16, 19, this must be a 2. Resolves this 2, 8 combination down here. That forces the 8 over into this cell. Um, these two had to sum to 12, didn't they? So that was 3, 9, this no longer can be at 4. So this is a 3, 9 double, and the other th cells 
in this column need to be 1, 4, and 5. Like that. Um, you can see if this is a 4 here, this isn't going to work because 12 means these two would have to sum to 14. Uh, it could still work, actually. That's annoying. I think this could still be a 9 in that instance. And if this is a 9, this would have to be a 4 and a 5. And in fact, we can prove that because if it if the 9 was shifted over into this 20 cage, the other two cells would need to be 1 and 2, which is impossible because the 1's already here. So we know that the 9 is not in the 20 cage, and therefore there's actually only one place it can go now, which is there. So this is a 4, and this is a 5, 5, and 3, like that. Now the nine. This is a three. And this is a two. So we now know these two cells here have to sum up to twelve. Only one way that can still work, and that's that way round. There we go. So we're very very close now to a solution. 1 and 7 into these two cells. You can see we've got an X ring on 7s now with this pattern here. So the 7 is forced into this column of the grid in this K, this 3x3 three three block and there's only one place it can go which is there. Um, this cell now has to be a 1 means this must be a 4 here. So remove the ones from those two squares. Oops, that's 5 or 6. That's there. This 9 here results in 9, 4 positioning here. 9, 9, 9, 9. That, that's the only square left that can take a 9 there. As well, fill this. I think this has got to be a two and a six as well, isn't it? Into these two positions, so like that. And then we can do a little trick with the four eights. See this four eight here and this four eight here. Well, that's impacting on this three by three block and forcing the four and the eight into this 26 cage. So that means the only other number that can go in there is a 5 to make the cage total work. And this 5 here means that therefore must be the 5. And right double there, which means that this is a 6. 5, 6, 8, like so. Um, Resolves the 5 1 combination here, that results the 1 7, 7 2. Four and five here, so this is forced to be a three. That means the five must be here, this must be the four, four, eight, like so. That means this is six, this is two, and this is eight. Uh, finally, I think we're, oops, that's not a five, definitely not, that's a two, that's a one. Um, okay, so what do we need? We need three and five there, so this is a three, this is a five, six, one, one, and three. And there we go, so another very difficult and very interesting killer. So thanks very much um, to uh, Greg who recommended that we take a look at that. Um, keep them coming. We love doing them and we hope you enjoy watching them. See you next time on Cracking the Cryptic.